question about developing systems. And you're right, there's a typo. Developing systems is there twice under financial admin. Did anybody else catch that? No. Didn't that far. Um, uh, Jerry, you get extra credit for that. So, um, Mackenzie was asking about developing systems and why it's under, it seems to be under every, it seems to be under every category. You're right, I put it under every category. Um, so, for example, for so far, financial administration. What's an example of a, of a system for financial administration? Oh my gosh, that's a really great part. The downfall of so many businesses not knowing where to put your receipts and what to do with them. Reimbursement points. Well, reimbursement <laughs> forms. Oh my gosh, mileage reimbursement forms. Oh, yes, it's very important, all these things. So you have a system for that, right? And if they don't just appear out of nowhere, you have to like spend some time making sure that they work, right? Remember that exercise we did about um, like a system has, you have to create a system, evaluate a system, make sure it's working for people. So that's what I'm talking about when I'm talking about developing systems. I'm talking about that, that list of things you have to do with systems, identify them, create them, and the whole nine yards. Okay, who else? Yeah. Another question. Um, do you guys want to ask your question about professional development? Yes. Um, so do we mean partaking in professional development, or do we mean like setting it up, training them? Good point. Um, so when I say professional development, um, I put professional development under professional work tasks, and I meant to put education and training under the HR category, or personal, personnel and member relations. Is there education and training? There's health and safety training. Um, yeah, there should be something under personnel and member relations about creating education and training programs. And then under professional development, usually that's like, usually that's for yourself. Like if you get professional development hours, it means you're going to co-op academy or you're taking a class or you're doing something that advances yourself in your job <coughs> or your ability to do your job. <coughs> Sorry. Um, so, do people feel like this was a useful worksheet that you might be able to use as a tool going forward? Yeah, I almost didn't give it to you because it was too scary. But I think it's good to know the thing. The danger of not giving this to you is that um, these things, like you don't budget time for these things to happen, and therefore, like certain people take them on, other people don't. Um, people end up feeling bad because they're not getting it done, but nobody has made the space for them to get done. Another thing it does is that it, when it, 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 it sort of obliges us to give credit to the people who are doing those things. Mm -hmm. So we have to think about how we pay people for the time that they put in. Enthusiasm to be inclusive and 
That sounds good. That's a good example. So I would make sure, we want those balanced values to be real, right? We don't just want to write them down and put them in a drawer somewhere and never see them again. Right? We want them to be real, and putting them on job descriptions and getting evaluated on them is a way of making them real. So the second thing is to go to that member evaluation sheet that you just spent some time with. I don't know, did anybody get to the end where you do the statement about performance expectations? Um, does anybody want to give me an example of what that might look like? So, um, so the worksheet was getting towards that. It was saying, what kind of expectation? What kind of expectations do we have for each other as workers? Does anybody want to give me an example of the kind of things that should, that would have come from a member evaluation? Say so you come on time every meeting. <laughs> oh my gosh, good one. Mm -hmm. All right, and then come on time every meeting or what? What happens if you don't? That goes in your in your services. Like that goes in your procedures, right? Yeah. So soft. <laughs> right. Take one hour of your job. Right. Okay, and then the third part of this job description worksheet is referring back to this job task budget. And everywhere where there's a check mark under your column for your job, you, there's got to be a thing that says, we'll fill out timesheet every week. We'll attend staff meetings once a month. We'll, you know. Uh, submit receipts periodically. So everything that has a check mark next to the task should be in that person's job description. Yeah. I had a question about the drive. I was looking at the able body uh, or the disability terms to avoid suggested alternatives. Okay. Thing, and yep. the must have a valid driver's license. It says not to use it, and there's no alternative language unless it's required to perform the duties of the position. Yeah. What if you have an organizational vehicle? And it's not, so it's like not any everyday responsibilities, but you want people with valid driver's license because like you have a truck and you might, and you want everyone on staff to be able to do runs occasionally with a truck. Is that? I mean, that sounds like that condition where it's required to do the job. Okay, so you can So if that. you're required to drive a company okay. truck, then you can say that you're required to have a driver's license. Okay. So we're not going to be able to spend a lot of time on this, but then like as a final check before you, you were done with all your, um, your job descriptions, is look through this document that we pulled from the University of Michigan website. It's a really good document, I think, especially about um, suggesting alternative language um, about um, different disabilities that people might be dealing with. Um, and there's a lot of things in here that I actually wouldn't have thought of at all um, about different ways to, to phrase things so that you're not accidentally or intentionally um, leaving people out who might be able to do the job. We don't have time to go over this now, but we are going to get into a larger discussion about anti-aggression in the workplace.